There are certain cars that were born to race. Ferraris, Porsches, and Corvettes quickly come to mind. But Volvo? How do you take a street car like the new S60 and expect it to compete against 911s, GTRs, and Corvettes? AutoWeek spent a race weekend with the folks at K-Pax Racing and got quite the inside story of what it takes to get a four-door sedan a place on the podium. I think it's the rarity of them that, that makes the Volvos a, a fan favorite. You know, because uh, you just don't expect it. I think that's probably the biggest thing. And, and also they look very extreme. You know, it catches people's eyes, you know, with the big fender flares and, you know, they're kind of all hunkered down on the big wheels and, you know, all the louvers and planes and, and things. Whereas the 911s, they look very similar to my neighbor's 911s. My name's Jim Huey, owner of K-Pax Racing. So to be successful at racing, you've got to have a number of different things. One, you've got to have a good team, good team manager, you've got to have good cars, and you've got to have good drivers. In our series, the cars are based closely on street cars. And as a result of that, they tend to be heavy. Most of the cars in this series are 2,800 pounds or more. Our Volvo is, starts at 3,350 with driver. And for a race car, that's relatively heavy. Have a new this new S60 out. It's a it's a much sportier car than they've ever had out in the past. And in our car it showcases that ability of a Volvo. How many inches do those brakes? 14 inches. Much bigger than ours. Yeah. Four piston Brembo brakes. Six. Six piston Brembo brakes. And obviously the disc isn't nearly as large. And what about the suspension? I mean, this is obviously a full race setup. Is it coilover or? It's coilover. It's still a, a strut front suspension, just like the, okay. the stock the car. Version strut. We have to keep the strut. same type of suspension. We took this car to the wind tunnel in Sweden. We flew it to Sweden last year to go to our wind tunnel. All the engineers took a close look at this car, you know, the technology they had in it, and uh, they were quite impressed. Uh, one of the things that's different about this car also, the Volvo uses the two and a half liter five cylinder engine, basically our stock engine with a big turbo. So there's a lot of lag. So the driving style is really very different than a normally aspirated engine. And from a racing standpoint, it requires us drivers to think way ahead. That's something else that's very different about driving the Volvo compared to any other race car I've driven. It's a complicated car. It's a, it's a difficult car to, to engineer. Well, I like to call it a space shuttle. It has, it's so complicated like the space shuttle is. There are systems and wires and solenoids and hoses and coolers all over this Volvo. There's not too many cars in our series or any series that are like our cars. And so we took over the development of the Volvo program and because it was going to take a while to do that, we actually ran Porsches for K-Pax racing for two years while we were developing the Volvos and won two championships with those. Porsche is more of a buy it and uh, race it car. It, I mean, there's lots of tunability and lots of things to do to it, but the Volvo is not very comparable to probably any car in the series for the amount of work it took to, to make a Volvo a race car. I mean, look at a Volvo street car and a Corvette in a Porsche and realize that to make this Volvo competitive took a lot more work, a lot more designing, a lot more things for us to design and build ourselves. We had to lower this car almost seven inches and still keep it as an all-wheel drive car with a front engine transaxle all-wheel drive. We can't move the motor. We have to live with this motor where it is because of the axle geometry, but we had to drop the car around it. So our motor's high compared to you know the center of gravity and we carry a lot of front weight. It's a challenging car to race, but when you get it all right, it's a, it's a very good car. The street Volvo S60 is a great combination of power and handling with the room and comfort. We're taking a car with a little two and a half liter engine and making it run with cars that have five, six liter engines. We're taking a roomy four-door sedan and making it race with full-on the best sports cars in the world. You have really loyal, passionate fans uh, in the cars that look like what they're driving every day because it's easy to root for that. If you drive a Corvette, it's pretty easy to latch on to rooting for a Corvette. If you drive a Volvo, it's pretty easy to go, yeah, I want that Volvo to win. And it, it gets people into the sport 
a lot more than I've seen in the past. So about how much horsepower is this thing putting out? Like 500, 550. Okay. All right, so that's about 200, 250 more than our stock level here. Also, our stock is all wheel drive and this is rear wheel drive, correct? No, it's all, oh, it's it's all wheel drive. It's, all wheel drive. Okay. it's not often that you get to drive both a street car and its racing cousin on the same track, but what better way to compare the two rides? Now we're gonna check out the Volvo S60 streetcar, which I am pretty certain will not compare to the excitement of that last drive. Uh, all right, Randy, let's see what this damn streetcar can do. <laughs> Got over 350 foot pounds of torque, 90, 100. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it will spin. I mean, it feels. You know, obviously it's not like the race car, but it still feels like we're moving. It's and, not a race car, but it's a fast car. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and good on the brakes, too. I mean, those brakes held pretty good dropping from 100 to 20 or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy smokes. <laughs> Somebody's got to drive that for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> not exact fits. The race car isn't an exact fit with the street car because there's much more more considerations in the street car. You know, the, it's a street car. It has to meet environmental pollution standards. It has to be cost effective from a building standpoint and it has to fit into a certain market niche. There's a whole number of considerations that they have to take into consideration and we've got a whole different set of considerations we have to take into effect. We've got to, you know, we've got to exit that corner as fast as we can. We've got to hit those brakes and, and burn up those brake pads as fast as we can. So Volvo has been known as a safe car forever. They've been the leader in a number of different areas and and safety. Safety was front and center during the race when the drive shaft broke on Randy's car at the start, which resulted in a crash. The back of our Volvo S60 race car is all Volvo, and it collapses. The back of that Volvo just completely was crushed. But there's a purpose to that that's designed in to dissipate impact energy, and it worked. That's part of the reason why I feel good today. I don't, my neck's not stiff, and I owe part of that to the inherent design of the Volvo. Well, I could say we're fastly safe, uh, or safely first, uh, but you know, safety is still our hallmark, will always be our hallmark, but in the luxury car business, there's other attributes you need to be very good at as well. Things like proud to own, fun to drive, great design, and those are all things that you see Volvo working towards. Volvo loves what we do, they love they love this car, they love the engineering in this car, but it's not always applicable to the street car. The all-wheel drive, the turbo, the intercooler, that's a lot of equipment, it's all complex, it's all first class, first rate, and it's all working really hard to win races yeah. in Pirelli World Challenge. And also, like Band of Brothers, we've been through a lot together. We've been through championships, you know, up years, down years, where everything seemed to be going wrong, and it just makes everybody closer. And nobody works harder than KPAX Racing in preparing and running their race cars. Catch all the latest auto enthusiast news at AutoWeek.com, in AutoWeek Magazine and iPad Edition. Talk with us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at AutoWeek USA.